Hi, here's a quick video on um, an explanation on how pulses paradoxes develops in patients with cardiac tamponade or pericardial effusion, constrictive pericarditis, you call it. So, um, kudos to my mentor to explaining it to me in such a simplified way that I'm able to explain it to you guys. So, let's just talk about when the cavities of the body and where which side of the heart gets its blood supply. So the right side of the heart, which is the right atrium and the right ventricle, get their blood supply from the IVC and the SVC. Um, talking about the cavities of the heart, of the body, um, the IVC has a thoracic component and an abdominal component. The SVC similarly has somewhat of a thoracic component and an extra thoracic component. So what happens when you breathe in? The cavity has negative pressure. So um, the IVC and the SVC are negative compared to the other abdominal cavities. So the abdominal cavity is positive and then the extra abdominal SVC is positive and that kind of sucks blood into the right side. Now think of what comes into the left side of the heart. So from the left atrium you have your pulmonary veins and the pulmonary veins are actually just intrathoracic. So there is no gradient that sucks blood inside um, compared um, to the right side. So the left side does not experience an increased venous return um, compared to the right side. Now what happens um, normally is that the, the ventricles aren't really dependent on each other. So say there's extra blood that comes in to, from the um, from the right side of the heart, the, um, the right ventricle can kind of expand and um, accommodate the extra blood that comes in. Now what happens during a pericardial effusion or a tamponade or um, constrictive pericarditis? So the, um, the right ventricle can't really move out, correct? Because there's like all of this blood kind of constricting the movement or the capacity of the ventricle. So when there is an increased return to the right side, the septum gets pushed towards the left side. So the so um, it produces this ventricular interdependence, and that reflects on the blood pressure and the inspiration, um, the respiratory variation of um, the the blood pressure in um, constrictive pericarditis or pericardial tamponade, etc. Also, the blood kind of backs, up, backs into the, um, the SVC and the jug jugular veins and that gives you the classic Kuzmal sign. So it's important to remember um, the gradients um, that cause the increased venous return to the right side of the heart which causes the pulsus paradoxicus and the Kuzma's sign. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and stay awesome.